Hi everybody, Josh Wax here. I uh, was re recently asked to share my testimony and honestly, I'm not proud to admit this, but that's that's something I don't do like a whole lot of. And there's, there's a few reasons for that. First off, I just, I hate speaking. I hate speaking in public. Um, I really hate speaking in private. It's just me and my camera right here and this is torture. I'm not gonna lie. So that's not an excuse. That's not, but it's, just something that never came easy to me. I never liked doing just talking. So there's that. Secondly, it feels really weird to tell a story you don't think is over yet. I uh, I mean, for one thing, I think of a testimony as a life story. And I mean, that's still going. But I mean, even just talking about my walk with God, I still feel like, you know, there's plenty of room for growth there. There's plenty of room for improvement. So it just feels weird telling about something that's still going on uh but lastly uh when you think of a testimony when i think of testimony you know i think of people who you know maybe they were addicts in their past maybe they were in trouble with the law you know maybe they just had something crazy going on in their life and then you know one night it just clicked and jesus grabbed them and they were a different person from then on that's what i think of and then in my case i was nine years old when i walked down the aisle so I don't really have much to say before that. Like, I mean, I was a kid. I, you know, I grew up with parents and a sister, played video games, played with toys. Uh, there wasn't any crazy story to tell before that point. Um, but my, my story about walking the aisle, like even that is lacking. Um, at nine years old, my sister, who's two years older than I am, she decided that she wanted to ask Jesus into her heart and she wanted to walk down the aisle and get baptized. So at nine years old, my biggest role model in life was my older sister. And I saw that she was going to do this. And because she was doing this, I wanted to do this. And I'm not saying I didn't know what I was doing, but I definitely did not have a full understanding of it. Um, like I'll tell you, me as a kid, uh, like with, with church, uh, first off, you know, I've gone to Hebrew my whole life. I'm 38 now. Uh, my dad, he was, you know, not my whole life, but, you know, he became a deacon. He became the Sunday school director. He, uh, he taught Sunday school. He and my mom taught discipleship training. He maybe helped with RAs at one point, but even if he didn't, I, I was in RAs. My grandmother, she was one of the main nursery workers and you know i was always with my grandmother too so if hebron's doors were open i was there my whole life um and so like i mean i remember as a little kid uh you know i'd i'd have to sneak toys in the church because i wasn't gonna pay attention i remember brother lucas preaching and he'd always you know towards the end of a sermon start yelling and in my head, I, went, I didn't know what was going on in the sermon, but I'd hear him start yelling, and I would think, hey, church is almost over. Um, and, I mean, that was, that was me as a kid. I remember, you know, my idea of God uh, when I was little. I thought God was Eeyore. And, you know, there's the, there's the prayer for grace that goes, God is good, God is great. And I always misheard that as God is good, God is gray. So I connected gray to Eeyore. And... You know, it wasn't until I don't even know what age I was when I heard God is good, God's great. And I thought to myself, that, that, yeah, that makes a whole lot more sense. I'm going to stick with that one. So, I mean, that's, that's just how that was. And I'm hoping I had that figured out by nine. I'm pretty sure I did. But I mean, even at nine, you know, I knew who God was. I knew, I knew that God existed. I never doubted that. I knew who Jesus was. I knew that he was God's son. He was God, um, and I knew he died for us, but I I don't think I fully understood, you know, why or how. I mean, I, I think as a kid, I just imagined, you know, here's, here's Rome. They're going around the world. They're going to kill us all. And then Jesus, you know, he went and single-handedly fought them off or something. That was just what I assumed happened. So, yeah, I mean, I didn't fully understand at nine what was going on. Um, but, you know, it's still a commitment I made, and God, he provided the understanding. Um, he, you know, he revealed to me 
hey, there's this thing called sin and you do a whole lot of that. And that's something that I can't allow. But, you know, that's where Jesus comes in. And that's why Jesus had to die for me. It wasn't because Rome was going to, you know, come around and kill everybody. It was, you know, it was my, my sin that was going to do it to me. So, I mean, here I am today. I, you know, I'm still very much a sinner, still very much a failure, a screw up. Uh, not at all perfect, not at all worthy. But, um, but I mean, I have to understand. I know God. I know I have a relationship with him. I know that as, you know, as worthless as I am, he still, the creator of the universe still sees me. He still knows me. And, you know, it still thinks I'm worth that sacrifice. So, I mean, that that's just, that's awesome.